Back now at 914 in our commitment 2018 coverage. We look at the attorney general race today. Incumbent Mike Hunter is taking on Democrat Mark Miles, and we spoke with Mark Miles last week. If you're tuned in on Thursday this morning, we welcome Mike Hunter into our studio. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for being here. I know sure. you're not feeling uh, you're feeling a little under the weather right now, so we appreciate your time. Uh, I'm good. Anyways, um, just out of transparency, going to ask you a lot of the same questions that I asked of Mr. Miles just last week. For people watching who may be unfamiliar with you, mm -hmm. who is Mike Hunter as a candidate for AG? Well, I'm the current attorney general. Um, asking, that much we gathered. <laughs> asking to be rehired. Uh, my background is I grew up on a farm up in Garfield County, South of Enid, Oklahoma State, undergrad, o, uh, OU Law. Um, I've kind of split my career in, between the public and private sector. I've been a uh, private sector attorney, private sector manager, uh, was in the legislature back in the 80s, served a six-year sentence mm -hmm. in the legislature. Uh, I've been Secretary of State under Governor Keating, and I've had this job for about 20 months. It's an important job. It's a job that uh, I and my team are working very hard at on behalf of Oklahomans. And tell me this, too, because the race for AG is really interesting, right? You don't answer to anybody, and politics mm -hmm. really shouldn't come into play. So what have your platforms been, yeah. if any, for, for your campaign? Well, uh, your remark is apt. Uh, politics really shouldn't have a role in decision-making at the Attorney General's office. And so to avoid that, you need to be bipartisan or maybe even nonpartisan. So my team, I've got good Republicans, Democrats, and independents um, representing Oklahomans on a regular basis. Uh, we go to court on behalf of the state. Uh, we try to keep the state out of court, uh, whether it's um, trial court, appellate court. Uh, with regard to public safety, uh, we've done our best to get fraudsters, scam artists, uh, criminals, uh, child pornographers off the street, hold them accountable. Uh, there's been pill mills that we've broken up. Uh, yes. Doctors selling uh, uh, inappropriately uh, opioids. So that's part of the job and we take it very seriously. And I'm gonna ask you about that in just a second. First, wanted to get to this. One of the things that you have been criticized for is your slow movement in rectifying the state's backlog in those uh, rape test kits. First week of October, you assumed authority over that, over that uh, to move it along. And Mark Miles, your opponent, came out and said this, 34 days before the election, Mike Hunter finally moves his office to have leadership of the Sexual Assault Forensic Evidence Task Force. My question to you, and I'm sure his too, is why now? What was that timing about? So the important thing to understand here, it was the governor's commission uh, the governor formed it. Uh, the governor um, requested that one of the people in the AG's office uh, help staff the commission. Uh, the commission has done good work. They've identified the problems that need to be addressed through legislation. They've identified funding needs. So it's appropriate at this point uh, for that to be folded into our legislative agenda and for me to provide more direct leadership for getting those uh, kits tested uh, for ensuring that there's funding, uh, for getting legislation passed that we need to establish priority and protocol. But not to boost your own campaign. Are you, uh, are you denying that? Uh, well, nonsense. As far as not, just because you say something doesn't mean it's true. And again, we're at a point where we've, we've got to get our legislative program together. Um, I talked to the Republican nominee for governor, the Democratic nominee for governor, so that there wasn't going to be a political issue with this. So. I've got a good a bipartisan approach to this issue. We're going to get legislation passed. We're going to deal with this. Okay, thanks for answering that. You've also gone to bat for Oklahoma and Oklahomans on more than one occasion. Probably one of the most notable is suing more than half a dozen pharmaceutical companies, uh, you know, who claimed that uh, you know, for disingenuous marketing, if you will, for some of their drugs and the side effects, uh, you know, addictive risks that came with that. Where does that case stand now? Because well, we we're, followed that closely. Uh, we're, in, we're in Cleveland County, uh, down in Norman. Uh, we're in the middle of discovery. We're taking depositions, uh, making sure that we're able to put the best case possible uh, on in May of 2019. Uh, we want an Oklahoma jury to hear, these, um, hear the facts, hear the evidence, and hold these companies accountable for decades of brainwashing, uh, fraudulent marketing, uh, thousands of Oklahomans dead and addicted 
uh, because of the actions of these companies. You know, sometimes businesses do bad things, and this is one of those examples. Uh, we're serious about this case. We've got a great team. And again, an Oklahoma jury is going to hear this evidence in May. Okay.